Hi everyone, welcome to Beyond Space, even at the Tundra. In this episode, we will talk about NASA's Perseverance, Perseverance rover and more exactly about one of its scientific instruments known as uh, SuperCam. It is a device designed to study the Martian surface using camera, lasers, and also spectrometers. That's why our next guest is Roger Wins from the Los Alamos National Lab Laboratory, who is the principal investigator of the SuperCam. He will present the vast capabilities of this interesting tool. Hi, Roger. Hey, Thomas. Hi, uh, uh, it's uh, great to have you here in our show. And um, uh, so if you can present our uh, the super camera, what it is and uh, why is it so super? Yeah, super cam is uh, super because it does a number of different techniques that uh, are useful for us as geologists on the surface of Mars. It, uh, I, I like to call it a geological observatory. It has yeah. a telescope. It's actually the, the largest optic on the surface of Mars, along with uh, a similar instrument, ChemCam, that we built uh, for Curiosity. And this telescope is actually a four and one third inch diameter or 108 millimeters. And so we, uh, you think of observatories as looking at the stars, but we take this telescope and we look at the rocks and the soils uh, around the rover, usually up to about seven meters away with some of our techniques but then all the way out to infinity with some of the other ones. And uh, so we've got, uh, we've got the highest resolution remote imager on the rover. And so, I mean, it's natural having a telescope. And then we have uh, what we call reflectance spectroscopy, which is where we take uh, just the sunlight and we look at it in all of the spectral ranges up to 2.6 microns, which is way in, in the near infrared. And that gives us uh, some of the mineral absorptions that we get from, uh, from those color bands uh, that, we, that tells us if there's clay minerals, for example. And then we have the laser. And the laser actually uh, uses, uh, is used for two different techniques for SuperCam. Uh, we take a technique that we, that we pioneered uh, with Curiosity eight years ago called uh, uh, laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy. And we shoot uh, pulses of high energy laser beam at uh, focused spots on the rock um, in, the, in the infrared. And it actually uh, ablates uh, or removes a little bit of material from the target. And then it, um, that actually creates a little flash. And that flash we look at from, with the telescope and we look at the color spectrum of that and it tells us the chemicals that are in that rock and we can calibrate that. And then we use, uh, we can double the frequency of that laser beam, get a green, bright green beam that will allow us to do Raman spectroscopy, which is another mineral technique. And that mineral technique, again, tells us the, uh, whether we have things like olivine or pyroxene. So, not, so it's very complementary to the chemical composition. And then finally, we have um, a, uh, basically, uh, we've got a microphone. And that microphone tells us about the uh, uh, about the compos uh, the heart, the zapping sound that the laser uh, makes when it hits that rock, and if it's uh, continuous zapping uh, loudly, then it's a hard rock. If it's actually decreasing in intensity, then it's a softer rock because the laser is actually profiling in, making a softer sound as it does that. So we have all of these different techniques that we use from one instrument on the rover. We're, we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, uh, me too. So it's uh, like uh, rather uh, the instrument is uh, focused uh, mainly on the ge uh, geologic um, uh, kind of uh, uh, yeah geologic uh, uh, studies, but rather than optical imaging and, and something like that, right? More than uh, yes. the, in studying uh, the rocks and um, the different uh, wave bands um, besides the optical, uh, so in infrared and, and um, uh, to, to see all the, 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 right, the, the greater, wider spectrum. Yeah, and then we, we can actually point it at the sky. Uh, yeah. We would do that to look and understand some of the atmosphere. And uh, so by studying some of the absorption bands, we can actually uh, understand the composition of the atmosphere the dust loading of the atmosphere and even how much water or vapor is in the atmosphere. So yeah, it's just uh, it's, it's a great observatory to have on this kind of a rover. 
<laughs> yeah. So it's like a, a, a more of a kind of um, um, upgraded version of the cam cam uh, that we've seen um, on a Curiosity, right? With uh, exactly. additional tools mm -hmm. like uh, what is what is the difference? Be uh, like uh, what what other tools are the, the, that we yeah. haven't seen um, in, in the, the the previous rover are are there right now? On the yeah, so yeah. right, right. So the ChemCam instrument on Curiosity was built by the same two teams, uh, Los Alamos uh, here in New Mexico, and then uh, CNES, the French Space Agency partnership. And that instrument, which had started uh, in Gale Crater on Mars eight years ago, going on nine years ago, uh, it uh, uses the same chemical technique using the laser to create this little flash, so lives. And uh, then it also has uh, a camera, and so, but the camera there is black and white. Uh, it is the highest remote uh, imager from Curiosity, but again, it's black and white. And uh, so we were able to upgrade it for SuperCam to a color camera with a little bit better resolution yet. And uh, so uh, we have- well, the, the, the first color camera on the Mars, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, great. it's not the first color camera because there's many other color cameras, but- uh, uh, but it's uh, the highest resolution. Highest resolution, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. The highest resolution color camera right in, right now on Mars. Uh, exactly. So talking about the uh, geological studies, uh, what are the first results? Something uh, uh, that uh, draw your attention? Yeah, uh, so we are really in a period of sort of checking out all of the different uh, aspects of the rover and parts of our instrument. So we've gotten only a few observations so far, uh, even though it's been a month. But uh, we, um, we yeah. <laughs> have been able to, to shoot at the surface of Mars now. And uh, so we've gotten uh, a few uh, LIBS observations. We got some chemistry and then a little bit of our uh, visible and infrared spectra as well and then images. And so what we've seen, we, we shot our first target uh, was actually uh, called MAZ, which is uh, M-A-A-Z. And it is the Navajo word for the planet Mars. And we're using Navajo names because yeah. we're in a quadrangle that uh, is a uh, mapping, a quadrangle that uh, is named after the National Monument Canyon de Chez in Arizona, Navajo lands. Um, but anyway, this target Maz was a, a light colored rock, relatively flat, right? Uh, just The connection, oh, okay, yeah, the same kind of chemical composition as a basaltic rock. That doesn't mean it's a, a volcanic rock, an igneous rock, because there could be a fine grained material that would flow into a lake, because we know that Jezero Crater was a lake one time, and then it would get cemented together into a sedimentary rock that still has igneous compositions or uh, basaltic compositions. But, but basalt is a kind of rock that we have on Earth, uh, in the ocean floors, and in some places uh, on the continents as well. So uh, not too unexpected, but uh, we're just starting our, uh, our, our, um, our investigations. And uh, one question that um, I think we all ask um, uh, ourselves is, uh, do you think uh, that we can find uh, life on Mars using SuperCab? Uh, we don't expect that we'll find uh, life currently existing on Mars, but uh, all of these geologic features indicate that there was abundant water a long time ago. Uh, we're talking about three and a half billion years ago. Can I see you? Oh, uh, and yeah. uh, that kind no, of makes okay. sense yeah. because Mars is a, I'm sorry, am I still there? only one-tenth of the mass of Earth, and so it has lower gravity. So what's happened over time is that it still had all of these resources, and that means that it would be a very habitable place with oceans and lakes and rivers. And uh, so at that time, the real question that we have is, was there life on Mars then at that time? Now it's hard to find because if we're, if we're to go back on the earth and look for life three and a half billion years ago, there's only a very few places we can even start to look for that. And it's, uh, it's very tough because rocks will get degraded over time. Um, yeah. And so we're looking at, uh, at, at uh, precious little evidence 
that there could be for a possibility of life. And it would just be microbial life. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's also part of the reason that this mission is focused on getting samples back from Mars, because then we could use not just the tools that we have there in the rover now, but we could use all of the tools that we have in terrestrial laboratories. So it's kind of a two pronged approach. We're looking with the best tools we have there on Mars now, and then we're going to bring uh, we're going to be part of this uh, campaign to bring samples back. Uh, with a rocket being sent to Mars to get these samples off the surface with the next mission. So that's, uh, that's, our, that's our approach. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Roger, for, for all the information that you have provided for uh, presenting our, the, the viewers' uh, Supercam. Uh, it was a pleasure to host you and uh, keep up the good work with the Supercam. My pleasure, you too. Thank you so much. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye.